So a couple of weeks ago, Apple announced the new M2 MacBook Air at their event. And ever since I've been scratching my head, trying to answer one question, who's this machine for? Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So after almost two years, we have the new MacBook Air, and it's one of the first machines to come with the brand new M2 silicon chip. And that is of course, exciting stuff. The M1 chip has been an absolute game changer, not only for Apple, but for the entire computing industry. So to see that new MacBook Air, powered by the bigger and better successor of the amazing M1 chip will make any Apple user get that sparkle in their eye. And I don't think it's just MacBook Air users that are looking to upgrade from an older machine. I think that the M2 MacBook Air has grabbed the attention of a new potential user base that has never used a MacBook Air before. I like to compare it to the iPad mini 6 in that regard, Personally, I was not at all an iPad mini user. If you're a regular to the channel, you know I'm all about that iPad Pro. But when Apple showed that new and improved iPad mini at last year's event, I forgot all about the iPhones and I was obsessed with this tiny new iPad. And for some reason, I just had to have it. And today I can confidently say it is the iPad that I pick up the most by far every single day. It is just so convenient and light and seeing the M2 MacBook Air kind of evoked that similar feeling for me. And I'm sure a lot of other people watching the event, but much like the iPad mini is not the only iPad, the MacBook Air is definitely not the only Mac and there are a lot of alternatives to choose from. So who is this new MacBook Air for? Well, there's a couple of things to consider. So let's go over some of them. And hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have a clear picture of where this machine fits in. The most obvious comparison, of course, would be to older MacBook Air models. Now, if you're considering upgrading from an Intel MacBook Air, I think now would be a great time to do so. Whether it's Apple throttling those machines or whether the Apple Silicon chips are just that much better, it is clear that the Intel machines have fallen behind in many ways, and it's probably a good idea to upgrade to Apple Silicon. But do you need the M2 MacBook Air, or will the M1 serve you just fine for the next years to come, so you can save yourself some cash? Let's have a look at some of the specs comparing these devices. And by the way, if you're into Apple-related content and you're not subscribed to the channel yet, now would be a good time to do so. I upload at least once a week, so plenty of fresh content coming your way. Right, the specs. So most obviously, the M2 comes in a fresh new design, moving away from the wedge design of the M1 MacBook Air and more towards the MacBook Pro look. Like the M1 MacBook Air, the M2 has two Thunderbolt ports, but it now comes with a new MagSafe 3 charging port, which allows you to charge your M2 MacBook Air to 50% in just half an hour, if you opt for the MagSafe charging option, of course. And we will get back to those options later because choosing the top of the line options will ramp up prices very, very quickly. So apart from the design and the ports, there are some clear differences between the M1 and the M2 MacBook Air. And of course, the biggest one is this new chip. And according to Apple's own accounts, it will give you twice the bandwidth, 18% faster CPU and 35% better graphics performance. Not only that, the new media engine will be able to play back multiple streams of 8K video footage. Not that I think anyone in their right mind would buy a MacBook Air if editing 8K video is their daily business, but let's be honest, on a light machine like that, without any real cooling systems, or at least no fans, to be able to do that is just nuts. The M2 model will give you 0.3 inches of extra screen real estate while rocking smaller bezels. It has been upgraded from a retina display to a liquid retina display. Both models have an eight core CPU, but the M2 offers up to 10 core GPU. As well as offering more unified memory, the M1 tops out at 16 gigs of RAM. And I know that has been an issue for some people and those users will be happy about the eight extra gigs of unified memory the M2 offers as you can spec it out to 24 gigs of RAM. Both have a maximum of two terabytes of storage and both claim an impressive 18 hours of battery life. The webcam has finally been replaced by a 1080p camera and the M2 also has a better speaker system with four speakers instead of two and spatial audio. Interestingly enough, the M2 comes in slightly lighter at 2.7 pounds. So without a doubt, the M2 MacBook Air has the better specs as one would of course expect from a newer machine. But there is a compelling case to be made for the M1 MacBook Air and that has to do with the price. 
The M1 model is available on the Apple Store starting at $999 for the base model. And to be able to buy a powerful M1 computer under one grand under the price of an iPad Pro is pretty great. So if budget is an important factor for you and you're looking to save some cash, but you wanna get into that Apple Silicon world, just get the M1 MacBook Air and be happy for at least a couple of years to come. But if you're one of those people that doesn't like the fact that it maxes out at 16 gigs of RAM and you're looking to get a bit more out of your computer without moving into that MacBook Pro territory, the M2 MacBook Air will be an enticing option. However, the price could be an issue. In my opinion, the base model should start at a lower price. And if you want those premium options we talked about earlier, you're looking at a hefty bill. Let's make a simulation. So bumping up the M2 MacBook Air to 24 gigs of RAM will add $400 to your final price tag. And if you want that full two terabytes of storage, that will set you back another 600 bucks, which brings the grand total to $2,500. And now we're getting into MacBook Pro territory where the same money buys you more cores, both CPU and GPU, more ports, a better media engine, and of course, a much better display. But of course, it's not all about specs. It's about user experience too. And this is why the M1 MacBook Air remains a serious contender in Apple's lineup. Because the way I see it, most MacBook Air users are not power users. They're looking for a machine that is easy to carry around, can take care of all their day-to-day -day computing needs, answering emails, doing some spreadsheets, watching a bit of YouTube, doing some web browsing, but doing so smoothly and quickly, quietly, and without any lag or hiccups. And for those users, the M1 MacBook Air is still a more than capable device. Even the base model at 999 will get you there. And you most definitely don't need to shell out 2.5 times that amount on a spec out M2 MacBook Air. A second and probably smaller user base are those users that just want the latest and greatest at all times. They want that shiny new machine with the best possible performance and they want the new design so people can see this is in fact the M2 MacBook Air. And look, there's nothing wrong with enjoying the latest bits of tech. And if you have the cash to burn, I say go for it, you do you. A third user base, I believe, are power users, but they already have a powerful Mac they keep at their desk, like a Mac Studio or even a 16 inch MacBook Pro, because let's be honest, those things are borderline portable. They're chunky boys. Take someone like me, for example. I need a powerful Mac to be able to edit these videos. You might not think it, but the files produced by those cameras and the plugins we use require some serious processing power as well as graphics performance. So there will be that user base that uses their desktop machine for all the heavy lifting, but wants a light and portable machine that isn't an iPad to do the work on the go, maybe even some light video editing, and then offload that work to their main machine when they get back to their office. If you have a powerful desk setup like that, you probably don't wanna buy another very expensive MacBook Pro to basically duplicate what you have on your desk. Now for that user group, I would say the M2 MacBook Air is a fantastic option. As mentioned earlier, it has the better specs and it has that upgraded media engine with ProRes and ProRes RAW capabilities, even up to 8K. So if you're looking for a B workhorse, an out of office machine with plenty of power, this is the one for you if you don't wanna go all out and spend that extra cash on one of the MacBook Pro models. So guys, let me know in the comments which you believe would be the wiser choice for you, the M1 or the M2. If you enjoyed the video, please give one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.